Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So most of you are probably familiar with the word acid. Most people just by thinking about it picture some gross green liquid that very dramatically eats through everything and seems really aggressive and dangerous. That's at least how acid is often portrayed in popular media and from the perspective of a somewhat experienced chemist who worked with many acids before, this just makes my head hurt. You see, there is so much more to the word acid and acid in general. Some indeed can cause a lot of damage, but some also allow you to digest food or are used to grow your favorite fruits and vegetables. That's why in this video I decided to give you a little tour of the amazing world of acids and show you that they are really not what many of us think. To prove it I am going to make one from just some plain table salt, so grab yourself a cup of lemonade and enjoy the show. Ok, so every textbook would start by explaining what an acid is and how it works on paper, but that's just plainly boring, so instead let me show you a cool experiment. If I get some regular baking soda into a bottle along with some water and dish soap and then add some of this mystery acid which I will talk about in just a minute, it creates this fountain of foam which is quite beautiful and really painful to clean. The reaction that just happened here is known as a neutralization reaction and this mysterious acid that I used is just some extra strong vinegar or in a more chemical term glacial acidic acid which I made in a previous video. This reaction, except for the stronger vinegar, is the exact same as the baking soda volcano you might have done in your school and it actually has some really cool chemistry going on behind it. The reason why it even occurred is because acidic acid has this little hydrogen atom here which is what gives it its acidic properties. Every conventional acid has this hydrogen atom and something attached to it known as a conjugate base. The strength of an acid is determined by how much the conjugate base wants to get rid of the hydrogen or in other words dissociate into so-called ions. For example, acidic acid is only a weak acid because in water only a part of it dissociates and hydrobromic acid for example is a strong acid because in water it all breaks down into protons and bromide ions. So with this in mind we can say that a conventional acid is just something wanting to get rid of a hydrogen atom in a water solution and that's actually the hydrogen that does all of the dissolving and eating away at stuff. The rest of the acid molecule just dictates how easily it can do so and what compounds does the dissolution create. We can interpret the strength of an acid on something called the pH scale. The lower the pH the stronger the acid. For example acidic acid has a pH of around 4 and hydrobromic acid around minus 9. Each level on the pH scale is 10 times stronger or weaker in comparison to its neighboring ones since it's a logarithmic scale, so hydrobromic acid is nearly 1 quadrillion times stronger than acidic acid, which is just crazy. To get an approximate reading of the pH value of a given thing, chemists often use these handy dandy yellow strips which turn different colors when exposed to different pH levels, often corresponding with the pH scale's colors ranging from red to violet. Also, it is important to notice that the neutral pH is not 0 but 7 and it is the pH of for example water. Above 7 the pH becomes alkaline or in other words basic and there is also a wide array of compounds having an alkaline pH also known as bases. They instead of getting rid of a hydrogen atom, most often dissociate into a hydroxide ion and have conjugate acids instead of bases, but apart from that they work quite similarly to acids. They can actually be even more dangerous in some cases, but because people associate the word acid with bad and alkaline with good, such damp products as alkaline water exist. It does completely and absolutely nothing, but it's actually kind of funny how some people think that it has some magical healing powers. When you drink it, it all just gets neutralized in your stomach because there is also an acid in there. It is similar to the previously mentioned hydrobromic acid, but instead of bromine it has chlorine and it is naturally made by your body to help you digest food. This neutralization reaction is also something that was the basis for the previous experiment. In it, the baking soda, which is a weak base, reacted with acidic acid to form water by combining both hydrogen and hydroxide ions. It also formed a salt called sodium acetate by combining the conjugate acid and base of the two reagents along with a ton of carbon dioxide which is a gas and it made all that foam in combination with dish soap. I chose this neutralization reaction just because of the carbon dioxide. Usually if I were to use a different base such as sodium hydroxide the reaction would look much less spectacular and that's how it usually is in the lab. 
If you think about it, it's quite sad that chemistry is not like in these stock videos with colorful solutions and happy, not sleep deprived, mentally sane chemists. But on the other hand, when something finally has a nice color, it's really cool. Anyway, after this whole introduction, you probably think, cool, but why would I need some weird hydrogen expelling chemical? Well, acids don't just react with bases, they have a ton of uses, and the easiest example of that is your body. As I said earlier, your body has a big sack of hydrochloric acid, also known as your stomach. Also, a lot of vitamins are acids, such as vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid, or vitamin B3, which is nicotinic acid. Also, in fruits there often is a lot of citric acid, so if you got that lemonade I talked about earlier, you are consuming some right now. It is also pretty interesting that we have a whole taste dedicated to acids, and it actually doesn't matter which acid it is, because you can make some good lemonade using dilute hydrochloric acid, which just kind of blows my mind. That's some good ass lemonade. There are also tons of acids used in factories, such as sulfuric acid, often dubbed the blood of industry. It is used in, for example, batteries, fertilizers and dyes. I could go on and on and talk about, for example, nitric, phosphoric, carbonic, malic or phthalic acids, but they all follow similar rules to the acids I talked about earlier, and I plan to dive deeper into them in future videos. Now, after giving you a brief overview of what acids are and how they work, I want to show you how one is made, and for that I specifically chose hydrochloric acid, more commonly known as muriatic acid. As I said earlier, it is the acidic stuff in your stomach, apart from that it has tons of uses in or outside the lab, and I myself have used it in countless videos for a variety of reactions, and making it is honestly quite interesting. You see, to do that I will firstly need some chlorine, and if you know some extremely basic chemistry, you might recognize it from sodium chloride, commonly known just as table salt. The thing that makes your food taste better is actually a compound containing a part of a really strong acid and a powerful base joined together through neutralization to create something completely harmless. Table salt is so safe because its components are really happy with their energy states and do not want to easily change places, which is good for cooking, but also means that I will have to use something really strong to get the chlorine out. That something just has to be a stronger acid in comparison to the hydrochloric one, because only then its conjugate base will replace the chlorine and join it together with a hydrogen atom. There are plenty of acids strong enough for this job, but by far the most accessible one is sulfuric acid. Now, before you dislike this video and write a comment about how it is impossible to get for a lot of people, I have some great news for you. You see, apart from the fact that you can quite easily extract it from car batteries as I showed in a previous video, since sulfuric acid has two hydrogens, it can form a quite special type of salts called bisulfates, which are much safer and accessible and can function as its substitute in many cases. They definitely can be used here. When it comes to getting them, potassium bisulfate is often used as a cheap pH lowering agent for pools since it is acidic, but the way I am going to get it is through first making some nitric acid. Nitric acid, much like the sulfuric one, is a must have in an amateur lab, and I make mine by combining together potassium nitrate and sulfuric acid followed by distillation. I won't get into much detail on this procedure here, but if you want to know more, you can watch my silver mirror video. Anyway, the byproduct of making nitric acid this way is a solid brick of potassium bisulfate, which I normally throw away, but now it will be just perfect for what I want to do. To start, I first have to get it out of this flask, and to do that I filled it with a random amount of distilled water and got it onto this rusty electric stove, which did a really good job of warming it up, in the end leaving me with a nice and clear solution. While it was still hot, I quickly got it into a large beaker and then let it slowly cool back down to room temperature. This resulted in potassium bisulfate crystallizing out as these moldy looking crystals which were rather squishy for some reason. I transferred about half of them, which corresponded to roughly 340 grams of potassium bisulfate back into the flask using a spoon and a funnel, which was really messy, but I had to do it because I still had to add some other stuff, and otherwise it just wouldn't all fit. Anyway, with the potassium bisulfate ready, I could now start cooking up the hydrochloric acid and for that I first had to get some table salt. I found some in a kitchen drawer and weighed out 145 grams of it, which I calculated to be more or less enough for all the potassium bisulfate. I then mixed it with the contents of the flask and now with the mixture ready, I could start the reaction. Before I do that however, I have to mention that you should never attempt this at home. Despite hydrochloric acid not being overly dangerous, 
it can still cause a lot of damage, so what I am doing here is for educational purposes only. Anyway, to get my product, normally I would just need to use simple distillation, but one of the more interesting properties of hydrochloric acid is that it is an aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride, which itself is a gas. This means that I will somehow need to trap this gas and lead it into water to make the acid, and I had to get really creative with assembling the setup, in the end coming up with this. I know that this whole thing looks kind of sketchy, but it should do the job. It consists of two main parts designed to make and capture the gas, with this nice piece of glass in the middle to prevent sagbag, which sometimes happens with these kinds of reactions, and it is just a total mess. To start generating the hydrogen chloride, I turn on my heating mantle, which initiated a reaction between potassium bisulfate and sodium chloride, producing hydrogen chloride along with sodium and potassium sulfates. Normally, this reaction would be carried out without the water since a lot of the created hydrogen chloride dissolves into it instead of escaping into the apparatus, but then this whole thing would need to be kept at absurdly high temperatures required to melt the salts together, which my heating mantle just can't reach. Fortunately, some gas started being produced and escaped into the distilled water flask, however, this was still mostly air, meaning that nearly all of the hydrogen chloride was dissolving into the water present in the boiling flask, which now got very yellow for some reason, and I had to come up with a different plan of getting my hydrochloric acid from this mess. I thought that since I already have it in the flask, I could just distill it over, so I assembled a distillation setup in place of the previous one and started heating the flask up real hard. At first, a lot of some yellow liquid started coming over, which was probably just some really dilute hydrochloric acid. I really have no idea why it was yellow, because even if there was some residual nitrogen dioxide being created, it should dissolve, leaving me with a colorless solution, so I guess that the chemistry gods are just messing with me. Anyway, I continued the distillation, periodically draining the distillate into different beakers. I also had a gas trap set up, and this time there was some hydrogen chloride coming over, indicated by these hardly visible waves, nearly bubbles. I continued the distillation until there was no more stuff coming over, and before proceeding, I have to quickly tell you about an online chemistry supply shop, BM Chemistry. BM Chemistry sells many chemicals, glassware and lots of other stuff, so if you are interested, there is a link to their page in the description. Anyway, the resulting distillate was orange this time, which is really weird. I could also see some nitrogen dioxide gas in the apparatus, which meant that there was some unreacted potassium nitrate from making nitric acid present. This could also mean that the distillate I collected is made purely of nitric acid, but I can quickly rule that out since it readily dissolves aluminum foil, which normally is resistant to nitric acid. Anyway, all the fractions obtained through the distillation are acidic, meaning they contain at least some acid, but to see how much, I tested how each one of them reacts with baking soda, and to be honest, most of them are quite weak, they might be useful for something, but I just decided to keep the last and strongest fraction, and get rid of the other ones. When it comes to its concentration, I measured it by checking its density, and using this helpful online chart, it came out to be around 36%, which is incredibly good and almost as high as it gets. When it comes to my acid's purity, apart from the orange coloration, which makes it look like apple juice, it should be really quite pure and suitable for a lot of reactions. It's incredibly cool that I managed to make some really strong acid from just some random pool chemical and table salt. The whole process is a really good demonstration of the properties and behaviors that apply to many acids, and overall I am really happy with how it went. Now, for some experiments with my acid, I decided to first test how it reacts with proteins. So, I got this egg white, and upon combining it with the acid, you can see that it becomes white, looking like it's cooked. This nicely shows what it would do if you drank it, for example, and you might think that you can do it since it's already in your stomach, but it is specifically designed to be resistant to it, while your throat is not. Anyway, one more thing that this acid is good at is dissolving stuff. It reacts with metals like iron and aluminum, producing hydrogen gas, and their chlorides, which are often really colorful and useful chemicals. And now, for a fitting end of this journey, I can react my hydrochloric acid with some sodium hydroxide, which through a neutralization reaction, creates the almighty table salt. This almost poetically symbolizes how you can waste hours of your work, but it also probably has some deeper connections to the cycle of life and all that stuff, However, this is not a philosophy channel, and it's just quite cool to see how different chemicals interact with each other. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, you can like it and subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content. 
Also, I would like to thank my amazing Patreons for their support and making these videos possible. If you would also want to support my work and gain access to exclusive content, feel free to also become a Patreon. And see you guys in the next video.